started with um, heat and thermodynamics today last time we were looking at applications of first law of thermodynamics and uh, we developed the various formula for uh, all the named processes like isobaric isochoric etc so we'll continue ahead from that point today looking into cyclic processes further ahead and also heat engines eventually So from the applications of first law of thermodynamics, let us take a quick recap of the various named processes that we have seen. So in general, we know that Q is equal to delta U plus W, where delta U is given by the general formula So this is the state function. W is integration PDV or area under the PV curve, which is a path function. And Q in general, we can say is NC delta T, which is also a path function. So the value of C is path dependent. A molar specific heat capacity for that particular process. So when we apply this principle to the four type of standard processes that we have seen, this is what we come up to. So in the case of isobaric process we have seen that c becomes cp which is f plus f by 2 plus 1 into r work done is p delta v which is the same thing as nr delta t of course delta u is a standard formula so i'm not getting into that and the graph of isobaric process looks like a horizontal straight line on the PV curve. So pressure is constant, volume is proportional to temperature. Okay. Then next, when we saw isochoric process, we saw that the molar specific heat capacity here is CV given by the formula F by 2R. Okay. The work done is zero and Q is equal to delta U is equal to ncv delta t here of course q is equal to ncp delta t and this looks like a vertical line on the pv space volume is constant so pressure is proportional to temperature the next thing we had seen was isothermal process So in an isothermal process, we saw that molar specific heat capacity cannot be defined because delta T is zero, but Q is not equal to zero. So delta U is zero, whereas Q is equal to W equal to NRT, natural log of this, okay. And temperature is constant implies that pressure is inversely proportional to volume. 
So this is what an isotherm looks like. In the PV space. Okay. And finally, we had seen adiabatic process as one where the heat exchange is zero. So delta U plus W is zero. So here W becomes minus of NF by 2R delta T. And we had seen that molar specific heat capacity becomes zero for such a process. And we had also seen that PV to the power gamma is constant or pressure is inversely proportional to 1 by V to the power gamma, where gamma is Cp by Cv or 1 plus 2 by F. So if all this information you remember, then you will see that very large percentage of questions, at least at J mains level, at least you can do just by direct application of these formulae and concepts. So compared to isotherms, adiabat looks like this. So a lot of questions can be solved uh, directly involving these formulae and concepts. At the JE mains and to a certain extent even the JE advanced level. So it's very important that these pieces of information, these little formulae and concepts should be at your fingertips. It should be well understood as well as remembered. Okay. So let's look at an example question today. Next. So we have a sample of okay, so we have a sample of helium gas. at a pressure of, let's say, four atmospheres and a volume of 0 0.25 liters. temperature of 400 Kelvin. Now this sample of helium gas is expanded adiabatically to a volume of 2 liters. And thereafter, compressed isobarically back to a volume of 0 0.25 liters. So first of all, plot both the processes on a PV graph and find out P2, T2 and the final pressure and temperature also. Second, calculate Q, delta U and W for each of the adiabatic expansion process and later the isobaric compression process. Take the value of one atmosphere of pressure to be equal to 10 raised by 5 pascals. For this question.
okay so this is based on what we've just learned in the previous lecture and also what i have listed above here for you as a revision so quickly apply this you have done these type of applications in chemistry also so this should not be difficult for you at all so please uh, try this out i'm expecting that you should be getting this correct should not take you more than 3 or 4 minutes just work this out and send me the answers please Okay, so hope you are getting how to solve the question. Just pointing out few things. It's helium gas, so it's a monoatomic gas. Right. So we should be taking the value of degrees of freedom as three. So gamma will become five by three. So for adiabatic process. you will have the relation that Yes, so that's correct, Kunj. Okay. 
So you can use this relation. Okay, so this is your final pressure after the adiabatic process. And then you can always use the relation that P1 V1 upon P1 is equal to P2 V2 upon P2. So you will get Okay, <clears throat> so from this now we can understand the graph of the adiabatic process. Okay, and this temperature was 400 Kelvin. Now this temperature will come down to 100 Kelvin. So you can see that compared to isotherms, the adiabatic process has a steeper curvature. Okay. Now next what is happening is we are going isobarically. We are compressing it back to the volume of 0.25 liters. So the second process is like this. So our final volume is like this. 
final pressure is this so what about the final temperature so final pressure is equal to p2 equal to 0.125 atmospheres final volume is of course equal to v1 which is 0.25 liters so final temperature we can see will become you can use this okay. or you can use that this temperature will be this So hope this is clear. Now next thing, calculate the values of Q, delta U, and W for both the processes. Do the second part of the question. That is a calculation of Q, delta U, and W for both the processes.
okay so very few people have sent me answers for the second part i don't know should be very easy to work out so anyway let's see this so for the adiabatic process q should be zero by definition okay and delta u is n f by 2 r delta t so that is n into 3 by 2 r into t2 minus t1 so we can write that as 3 by 2 into p2 v2 minus p1 v1 so that is 3 by 2 times the product of pressure and volume finally is how much 0.125 into 4 that is point 5 okay minus p1 v1 initially was 4 into point 25 so that's 1 okay. into 10 raised to the power 2 in joules because this part is in liter atmosphere so 1 liter atmosphere is equal to 10 raised to the power minus 3 into 10 raised to the power 5 that is 100 joules so that's how this gets multiplied so as expected the delta u is negative because your temperature is decreasing so delta u will be minus of 3 by 4 into 100 so minus 75 joules which means work done will be plus 75 joules so q is zero delta u is negative and w is just equal and opposite to delta u because for adiabatic expansion or adiabatic process q is zero w is equal to minus delta u okay. in general this is a formula and now coming to the isobaric process isobaric compression is very easy so for this process q is equal to n cp delta t that is n into 5 by 2 r into t minus t1 rather t minus t2 which you can also write as 5 by 2 into this common pressure p2 into final volume which is v1 minus v2 okay. so 5 by 2 into 0.125 into 0.25 minus 4 into 100 joules so 5 by 2 into 1 by 8 into minus of by 4 okay Similarly, delta U is n C B delta T, or n into three by two R into this temperature difference. So from this, delta U will come out to be
this much okay and w is p delta v which is the same thing as nr delta t so here the blue will come out to be Okay, so these are the formulae that we use for the isobaric process. And in this case, it's an isobaric compression. So all three quantities are negative. Heat is extracted from the gas, its internal energy decreases, and work is done on the gas. It's being compressed. So make a quick note of this and make sure all the calculations are clear, the formula used are understood. Please let me know if there's any doubt. We will continue ahead next. Okay, now next type of question. Uh, which one, Kunj? Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, this is a mistake. Correct. Yeah, in the second part, isobaric process, yes. So this is, uh, this will have to be multiplied by five, the whole thing. Yes, that's correct. Here there is a correction. This factor here, please note down people. It should be minus 15 by 4 instead of 3 by 4. So this whole factor will get multiplied by 5. So this will become... Okay. So just a minute, I'll put up the correct values. minus of 117.19 joules. Okay. I'll tell you the other values also. Okay. 
So similarly, this one should get multiplied by a factor of five. So it should be seventy point three two. And similarly, this one become Yes, good. Thanks for pointing that out. Uh, hope you are getting the same values now. Okay, good. All right, so everybody make sure you have taken down this correction over here. This factor I had wrongly written as minus 3 by 4 whereas it should be minus 15 by 4 so these are the corrected values for each of the parameters okay now let's look at another type of question we can get which is a little bit more indirect in comparison so next example we'll see a typical J type of question where there is some indirect information given to us. So now the question is in the form of a given graph where the graph is actually showing the temperature in Kelvins okay, with respect to the volume in liters in a certain situation. So it is showing us a graph like this. We're also like this okay so this is a sample of let's say helium gas again initially at a where the temperature is 200 Kelvin. The volume is 1 liter. And the pressure is 1 atmosphere. Okay. Undergoes the processes AB and BC as shown. Okay. Temperature at B is given to us as 400 Kelvin. So what we have to now do is identify processes A, B and B, C. Okay. Find out pressure at B, volume at B, pressure at C, volume at C, and temperature at C. Third, calculate net values of Q that is heat supplied to the gas delta U change in internal energy and work done by the gas for the entire 
process a b c it is for this entire cumulative process from a to b to c you have to calculate the values of q delta u and w okay so this is a typical je type of question because it's not directly given to you you have to identify from the you know indirect information given in the graph that what all formula have to apply because what type of process is happening etc and that to the graph is not a standard one it is a temperature volume graph okay and again for this we will take one atmospheric pressure to be its approximate value of 10 raised to the power 5 pascals so just try out this question people you can identify the process ab quite easily because it's a straight line passing through the origin so it means this what kind of relationship when we have a straight line passing through the origin like this the equation is like this y is equal to mx so y is proportional to x so use that property over here to understand what type of process the process ab is
Okay, so let's see uh, what's happening. For the process A to B, you can see that temperature is directly proportional to volume. So that means pressure is constant. You can see that the volume is expanding. So this is an isobaric expansion such that temperature at A upon temperature at B is volume at A upon volume at B. So volume at B will become okay. So so two liters. Okay. And of course, pressure at B is equal to pressure at A, which is one atmosphere. That's one thing. Then B to C, you can see volume is constant and temperature is coming down. So it is isochoric cooling. Okay. So BC is one where volume is constant. So pressure is proportional to temperature. Okay. So pressure at C is equal to pressure at B into temperature at C upon temperature at B. Now temperature at C you can see is temperature at A. From the graph you can see it's a common temperature. This temperature was given to us as 200 Kelvin. And temperature at B was given to us as 400 Kelvin. And this volume was given to us as 1 liter. Okay. And pressure at A was given to us 1 atmosphere. So all this information was given to us. So from this now we can find out that Pressure at C is 0.5 atmospheres. Okay, so all these things we have found out now. So you can now convert all this information like this that at E so from here we are going by an isobaric expansion to be where the pressure remains constant the volume has doubled because the temperature has doubled and from here we are going to C which is via an isochoric cooling to a situation where The pressure has become half because the temperature has also become half. Okay. So pressure is 0 0.5 atmospheres. Volume remains constant at 2 liters. And temperature has reduced to 200 Kelvin.
So now you can see that Q during AB is NCP delta T or so that is 5 by 2 into this common pressure into the volume difference. So 1 atmosphere into 2 minus 1. Okay. So that's our QAB. WAB is P delta V. Okay. So that is this work done in the process AB. Now, similarly, for the process BC. Calculate this as 3 by 2 into the common volume into the pressure difference. So 2 liters is the common volume and the pressure is reducing to 0.5 atmospheres from 1 atmosphere. Sorry, this will be half of this, minus 150. So this is a QBC and WBC is 0. So now for the net process, QABC Similarly, and therefore it is not surprising that delta U net is zero because you can also see that the final temperature is equal to the initial temperature okay. and also Q net is equal to W net. So delta U is zero for the net process. Okay. Now in case you are having some difficulty visualizing this on the PV graph, we can always convert this to, sorry, on the volume temperature graph, you are having difficulty visualizing this whole process. 
you can always convert this to a PV graph. So in the PV space, this particular process will look like this. It's, we are first undergoing an isobaric expansion. Yes. And then we are undergoing an isophoric cooling. But it's happening in such a way that we are coming back to the same isotherm. So this isotherm was at 200 Kelvin. This isotherm is at 400 Kelvin. No wonder our net change in internal energy is zero. Because we are coming back to the same isotherm. So this kind of analysis and this kind of concept application should be uh, very easy and natural for you in this subject if you practice properly. And so it's easy to score the marks in JE as well as finish the questions of heat and thermodynamics faster compared to questions in chapters like center of mass or work by energy, etc. So thereby it's like a bonus chapter where you have to score marks as well as save time so that you can invest that time in questions which are more complicated and lengthy. Okay, people, so hope this question is clear. Now we will move on to the next application. Just a minute, somebody has a doubt, let me work it out. Yeah, Kunj, I'll come to your doubts in the module. But I want to finish the theory portion first, then. Okay. So when I finish the theory portion of this section, first law of thermodynamics, I will Keep some time aside for the doubts. 
then we will come to the last part of the chapter which is the heat transfer section so next thing we will see is something called polytropic processes or general polytropic process this also you might have studied in chemistry so general polytropic process is any process such that the pv relation is of the type pv to the power alpha is constant or p is inversely proportional to 1 by v to the power alpha don't confuse the symbol alpha with the proportionality here where alpha is any real number for example if alpha is equal to minus half that means pv to the power minus half is a constant so that means p is proportional to v to the power half or p is proportional to square root v so this is not any of the standard type of processes like isothermal adiabatic etc but it is a process which will on the pv space look like this it look like a parabolic graph y is equal to root x type of graph where something like this so if this is the process where p is proportional to root b that means pa upon root ba should be equal to pb upon root pb or p is equal to some constant multiplied by root So this is the gen. This is an example of a general polytropic process. With the value of alpha is minus half. Pv to the power minus half is constant. So this is just one example. Okay. Now there can be so many other examples because alpha could be any real number. so this entire you can say family of curves or family of processes which are given by this general relationship we can treat by one common set of formulae which is why this becomes very important
okay another example now see what happens is all the particular named processes that we have isobaric isothermal etc they all come under the category of general polytropic process okay we can see that because example if alpha is equal to 1 that means pb is constant so p is inversely proportional to b this is isothermal if alpha is equal to gamma then pb to the power gamma is constant so this is adiabatic okay if alpha is equal to 0 that means pb to the power 0 is constant that means pressure itself is constant so this is an example of isobaric process so even the four named processes now if alpha tends to infinity it means pb to the power infinity is a constant or it means p to the power 1 by infinity into volume is constant it means volume is constant so alpha tending to infinity becomes the situation of isochoric process okay so all the four standard processes are special cases of this family of curves okay. now next thing we'll see for polytropic process for any general polytropic process we can use these formula that work done is equal to nrt sorry nr delta t upon 1 minus alpha this is work done by the gas okay. and q is equal to nc delta t where c is equal to f by 2r plus r upon 1 minus alpha or c is equal to cb plus r upon 1 minus alpha okay. so these are the general formula that we can use whenever we are dealing with a polytropic process so for example in this you can see that the case of alpha equal to 0 is a isobaric process okay. so work done is given by nr delta t upon 1 minus 0 and this correct that is the formula for isobaric process then c is given by f by 2 r plus r upon 1 minus 0 so that is f by 2 plus 1 into r so that is cp only so c is equal to cp and q is equal to n cp delta t so this is just one example okay but this will work for all processes and we'll discuss the derivation and the proof of this in a moment but whenever we are dealing with a polytropic process now we can directly use these formula for calculation of the two path dependent quantities q and w of course delta u is universal for all processes because it's a state function so for that we don't need any particular formula it's a universal formula
Okay, so let's let's look at an example problem now. For example, we have a process where a gas is undergoing a polytropic expansion, which is shown by this kind of curve. So this is a curve where P is inversely proportional to one upon square root of volume. So a sample of oxygen gas, let's say, undergoes an expansion AB such that PV to the power half is constant or P is inversely proportional to, to the okay. if pressure volume and temperature are so much here and volume at B is 4 liters then first of all find pressure at B and temperature at B and second Q delta U and W for the process AB. Okay. So this question we will see is a direct application of the polytropic process formula that we have just talked about in the previous section and we'll see how to apply that over here. So we'll see here that the formula based method, which is the easiest method, PV to the power half is constant for process AB. It means that AB is a polytropic process with a polytropic exponent as half. Okay, so therefore, formula used can be this that molar specific heat capacity will be F by 2R plus R upon 1 minus alpha. So that here will become 5 by 2R okay, because oxygen is a diatomic gas plus R upon 1 minus half. So that is 5 by 2R plus R upon half. So that is 2R. So the molar specific heat capacity for this process will become 9 by 2R. So once you've got this, now we can understand that Q will be equal to NC delta T. Okay. W will be equal to nr delta t upon 1 minus alpha so that is 2 times nr delta t and this will be 9 by 2 times nr delta t and of course delta u is the standard value n f by 2 r delta t so no change in that so now we have to use these formulae. Okay. But to use these formulae, we need the initial and final state. So that is where now this will come in that this being the case, okay. P A V A to the power half is equal to P V V B to the power half. So pressure at the point B will become pressure at the point A into square root of VA by VB. So 
two atmospheres into square root of one divided by four. So pressure at B is becoming how much? It is becoming one atmosphere. Okay. And we will also use the relation that PAVA upon P is equal to PV PV upon PV. So from that we will get the relation that temperature at the point B. So pressure is becoming half, volume is becoming four times. So temperature will become double. So temperature will become 400 Kelvin. Okay. So from this, we know this. Once we know this, we can substitute this in the formula below and we can calculate the values of Q and Delta U and W. So next up, we can substitute this information here. So we'll get Q as nine by two to PVBB minus PAVA. So 9 by 2 into four minus two. That's in liter atmosphere. So we'll convert that to plus 900 joules this is what I'm getting. Just check the answer. This is again assuming that we are given that we can take one atmosphere as 10 raised power 5 pascals. Otherwise, the answers would have slightly different digits. So, this is the direct formula method. And this is what you should be using at the exam level. We'll also discuss where the formula came from. In just a moment. So just go through this and let me know if this is clear. Is there any doubt in any of the parts or any calculation needs clarification? Alpha isn't minus half beta because question may diya when aapko that pressure is inversely proportional to one by root b. Understood, na? See, this is what is given to us in the question, na? Pressure is inversely proportional to one by root b. That means pressure is equal to some constant divided by root b, na? That means p root v is constant. So p v to the power half is constant. Whereas the one you are saying would be different it would be the one we had drawn earlier alpha being minus half that would be this kind of process this is the one where alpha is minus half understood na the difference between the two okay so this is something we have to be careful about
Okay, now let's see how we would have done this question using fundamentals. So it would be quite a bit more lengthy because in the absence of the direct formula, we'd have to work out the path dependent quantities by integration. So by integration of work done as the alternate method, this would have become like this that during this process, A to B Given that P is inversely proportional to 1 by root B. So we have all that, that PA into root BA is equal to PB into root BB is equal to some constant, let's say K. Okay. So we make use of this. So from that, we know that the pressure was going from two atmospheres to one atmosphere so the volume was expanding from one liter to four liters okay. and the temperature was accordingly changing from 200 kelvin to 400 kelvin so all this we know so this is just coming from the equation of state because it's, this is the information given to us in the question. So let's write this constant as something different so that we don't confuse. So this constant is, let's say, yeah, some. Okay. Now what will happen is that during the process, we can calculate the work done by this integration. Okay. So work done will be integration PDV. Now in that, we'll have to use the like that at any point if the pressure and volume are p and v then p root v is also equal to this constant okay so we can replace this as whatever constant divided by root v dv from a to b using this relation now because pressure is constant divided by root two. So my work done will now come from this. Okay. At the point A, V was equal to, how much was it? One liter. To the point B where the volume is four liters. So this will become this constant into v to the power minus half plus one. So that's plus half. Okay. So two root v is the indefinite integration from volume at a of one liter to volume of b at four liters. So you can see that the value of work done will come out to be two times whatever this constant is into root of b b minus root of v a. Okay. I guess it wrong. Now the only thing is how do we find out the value of the constant so that we can find out the work done in joules. So now the next thing is what is the value of the constant? Okay. So that we can see that PA root PA is equal to PB root PB is equal to that constant. So that constant's value is pressure at A, which is two atmospheres into square root of volume at A, which is one liter. So it is two atmosphere into liter to the power half. It's a physical constant. This constant is like this. Okay, so we plug that in over here now. So this value becomes 2 into 
टू एटमोस्फियर स्क्वेर रूट लीटर ओके नाउ इन टू दिस फैक्टर विच यू कैन सी इज इन रूट ऑफ लीटर्स बिकॉज दिस इज स्क्वेर रूट ऑफ वॉल्यूम इन लीटर्स सो इट अल्टीमेटली बिकम्स टू टू दोर लीटर एटमोस्फियर or it becomes plus 400 joules and you'll see this is exactly the calculation that we had got above we got exactly this calculation the work done at count be plus 400 joules okay so now coming back to this now so in the formula based sorry in the integration based method you first calculate work done like this the next thing is delta u is state function so this is a state function so this is okay so that is sorry nr into delta t so tb minus ta next step you will write that as 5 by 2 nr tb which is pb vb minus nr ta which is pa vb so you can see the final is 4 liter atmospheres initial was 2 liter atmospheres so this is becoming Plus 500 joules. Okay. So as expected, delta U is plus 500 joules. Okay. And now we will calculate Q by the first law of thermodynamics. So using the work done and the delta U that we have calculated, so Q will come as delta U plus W okay. so plus 900. so this is the fundamentals involved over here in this particular question but as i told you that at the exam level we will be using the shortcut formula for polytropic process so that we can avoid all this integration then finding the value of the constant and all that we don't need to use this we can directly go with the formula based method i'm also going to show you how the formula comes it comes from the similar derivation as this example it comes by application of the first law of thermodynamics on the one hand and the equation of the polytropic process on the other hand that pb to the power alpha is constant so just make a note of this quickly first
Okay. So now that we have understood this, let's have a look at the derivation of the polytropic formula. So coming back to general polytropic process. So we have PB to the power alpha is constant. So from this, we can see that if you differentiate both sides of the equation, then a small change in the quantity PB to the power alpha should be a change in the quantity which is constant on the other side. So DP into V to the power alpha plus V into alpha V to the power alpha minus one dV should be equal to zero. And here we are using the product rule. Differentiation of F1 into F2 is equal to F1's differentiation into F2 plus F1 into F2's differentiation. Okay, so this, this concept we are using over here. So from this we have, if we take v to the power alpha minus one common, we have v dp plus alpha pdv. is equal to zero. So which means that V D P plus alpha P D B only must be zero. Because obviously the volume can't be zero. So this is equation one that we are getting. This is basically from the polytropic formula. P V to the power alpha is constant. From this we are getting this first equation. Now, second thing we have is PV is equal to NRT. So we apply the differentiation or small change concept over here. We'll get PDV plus VDP is equal to NRT. So this is our second equation, which is coming from ideal gas law. but in differential form. And then we have the first law of thermodynamics. Q is equal to delta U plus W, which we can write in differential form that DQ is equal to DU plus DW, where DW is PD. Okay. So we have And so from this we have NCDT is equal to NF by 2RDT plus PD. So this is our third equation. It is coming from first law of thermodynamics in differential form. Now it is a matter of manipulating these to show the formulae that we get for polytropic process. So we can see that work done is integration PDV. Okay. Now from equation one, we can write BDP as minus alpha PDP. Now substitute this in equation two, and we can write this as PDB minus alpha PDB is equal to NRDT. So we can write one minus alpha into PDB is NRDT. So from this, we can get the relation that PDV is NRDT upon one minus alpha, which means that 
during a small change the differential work done is this much so the total work done which is integration of this will become integration of this factor now in this all these are constants nr upon 1 minus alpha so integration of dt is nothing but delta t so work done is nr delta t upon 1 minus alpha so this is the first part too that the work done should be given by this formula and and you can see that this is coming directly by the application of these three equations and for the second thing the value of c this step if we substitute this directly in equation 3 now in this equation okay so substitute in equation 3 so we will get n c dt is equal to n f by 2 r dt plus p dv which is now n r dt upon 1 minus l So we can see here that dQ, which is n C D T, becomes n into f by two r plus upon one minus alpha into D. So this is the second formula that C the total capacity for polytropic process is given by this formula, and Q is therefore. N C delta. Okay, so this is a simple proof of these direct formula that we have discussed about polytropic process. More important than the proof for us is the application. Every time we are dealing with a general polytropic process, we can use this formula for molar specific heat capacity, and from this the value of Q, we can use these directly. Without doing integration and all this, okay. So with that, we will come to the session. Next lecture, we will look at cyclic processes, and we will also look at questions from module and Nitsi Burma. So for the next upcoming lecture, please keep asking questions. Please keep doubts and questions ready from the module or Nitsi Burma. especially from applications of first law and from the earlier part calorimetry and thermal expansion if required okay so that's it for today's session people wish you all the best